In this video, we'll go through a full interior render and I'll take you through the camera placement and composition, my new favorite place to find realistic materials and also how to create realistic lighting. So let's jump straight into it. So right here, as you can see, I have a model of a living room. And first thing that we will do is that we'll go here to create a new scene, uh, which will be a camera for us uh, as a reference to know what angle we're capturing. That way you don't spend time on materials, lighting and areas that we will not be working on. So right here, I'm going to have that selected. I'm going to click edit camera and I'm going to turn the projection to two point perspective and then the aspect ratio on 16 by 9. And I will probably leave the field of view a little bit uh, wider to around 60 because I want the space to appear more spacious. So I'm going to update the scene in order to save all of these changes. Next up, what I will do is that I will go to HDRI here. This is where we will mainly take care of the lighting. By the way, for all of the resources during this tutorial, the textures, the HDRIs, etc., I will be using real world textures, which you can find in the first link below. So in order to fix um, overall the lighting from the outside, what I will do is I will go to HDRIs and I want to find an HDRI which is very neutral in the sense that it could be a bit gloomy or cloudy. So for example, this one could work. The reason being is that I do not want any sharp shadows in the scene. I would prefer to have a softer uh, look in terms of the lighting. So now that I've downloaded that in order to upload it, I'm going to click here. I'm going to click customize HDR and wherever you've downloaded it as well. If you're following along, you can go ahead and just basically double click it and it will be inside your scene. So as you can see right now, uh, this is how the HDRI looks. I want to try and rotate it to an area which uh, the actual um, trees and everything do not look super out of proportion and overall i think this is perfect because we do not want a lot of uh, like direct strong lighting as you can see immediately the lighting is looking a lot better and it has that soft look that we are aiming for so now what we will do is that i will go ahead and while i'm looking at the render here i will go ahead and download all the textures that I think we will need throughout this render. So first of all, we'll go to tiles and we'll try to find a tile similar to this, but obviously here in real world texture, we can find more materials in terms of variety and materials with higher quality. So I think something like this would work fine. So I'm gonna download this one for the marble. Then we can basically go ahead and try to find a carpet. So let's just type in carpet. So something like this could work. And I think this is exactly what we need right here. Then we can also go ahead and find a wall or paint. We can try and find some sort of beige paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this lime plaster first. And then we can obviously do edits on all the PBR materials through uh, D5. Now I think and one of the last things that we'll need here is that we'll go to fabrics and we'll find a gray fabric and also a beige one. So for this part, I think this will work great. And then for these other ones, I think this will work great. Okay, so now what we can do is we're going to select all of these materials one by one and replace them through the batch import PBR textures that D5 offers as an option. So first of all, let's get started with the tiles. I'm going to select all of these maps and upload them. We're going to click continue. And as you can see now, these are replaced with a much higher quality material. What we can do as well is we can lower the saturation a bit just so it is a bit grayer as well. Now let's do the same thing with the carpet here. Let's do batch import. I'm going to go right to where I have the carpet material. Let's go to 4K, select all of these, open, continue. As you can see now, this is way too big. So we're just going to increase this in size quite a lot. Uh, probably something like uh, this, I would say. But one thing that we will do as well, uh, before I also fix the size, we will also turn this into a displacement material type. So as we go here at height, I'm going to go ahead and select the displacement map here as well. And this will make it seem a lot more realistic, a lot more uh, like in 3D. And we'll also make this darker. Now we can also go ahead and uh, reduce it in size as well. Maybe also uh, rotate it by 90 degrees. And I think the carpet now looks a lot more uh, closer to the reference that we had before. Maybe just a little bit um, brighter as well. Okay, cool. 
So now we can select uh, this fabric material. We're going to go ahead and use the Bash PBR texture now as well. So we are going to go ahead and check out this one. This is the beige color, which is exactly the one that we need. We're going to click continue and then we're going to use a displacement map. And then in the height map, we are going to go and click once again. We're going to click uh, triplanar. We're going to keep texture shape as well. And then we'll make this a lot smaller, probably uh, something like this seems fine. And then uh, what we can do as well is let's just make this well, displacement map as well just so the bumps are a bit more in uh, 3d and then we're going to apply the same material over here in this chair i think um, or we can also leave that the way it is uh, but what we'll do is we can also replace this all materials one by one with the textures that we downloaded earlier from real world texture as well as the hdri that we got okay so this looks quite good i think uh, what I will do on this one as well is maybe lower the size just a little bit and then let's also make this a displacement map and add the height map right here. I think this should be fine. Uh, what we can also do is maybe I can duplicate this and apply it to the pillows, but I'll also make the pillows just a little bit darker. Uh, which I think now overall it looks quite good. One last thing that we'll try and do is we'll go ahead and import the PBR textures for the wall here. So we will go to this, the pure line one. I'm gonna click open, let's continue. And I think this looks quite good in my opinion. This is pretty close to what we had. One thing that I would do as well is that I will uh, make this a bit brighter. So I think as far as the materials go, this would be all we would do in our seat. Now, uh, what we can do as well is that I'm going to go ahead and select uh, this and I'll make this an emissive material. Uh, that way it looks kind of like an LED strip. And then I'll also keep the temperature of this a bit warmer. So let's update this. Okay, so now we will go to the assets here and I'm going to go ahead and search for someone walking. Uh, maybe just add a bit of life to this uh, render. Um, I think someone walking out there, uh, maybe we just add Betty walking. So let's add Betty right there. Uh, do I want her? Yeah, I think I want her faced with the back towards the camera. I think I'll just stop the animation. So now we'll go here, we'll type in curtain. And I'm just going to add um, some curtains right here, uh, one on this side and one on the other side, just so it looks like it, it needs the curtains to look a bit more uh, livable in that sense. Uh, so let's rotate it to 180 and then let's stop the animation. And then the size, I think the height has to be a lot more. Uh, if I play with the animation, it could look something like this. And then let's take it over here. And I think we could change the animation to just a little bit earlier. Um, but I don't think these need to move that much. Is there any, I'm looking for something which doesn't have wind, wind closure. I think this one should be a bit more, uh, static. Yep, nice, okay. This I can rotate it to 180. So I think we'll leave it like this for now. Cool, so now at this point, there is just two more things that I would like to add in terms of lighting before we would move to post-production. First thing is that I like to add a uh, white plane. And this is just so uh, when we add this underneath here, uh, the light bounces a lot more and it actually creates that soft look even more than what it is right now. So let's just increase this in size. I think something like this and we'll update this and then we'll go ahead and use the rectangular lighting. Let's add one right there and then let's rotate it for 90 degrees or 180. So let's increase the attenuation radius all the way up and then let's just put this outside. Uh, let's increase this in size by quite a bit. So. It will need to be something like this. Um, and then I'll just decrease the intensity. Uh, what I'll also do is I think I'll also make it a bit like coming from an angle, make it a little bit upwards. And I think I'll move it a bit backwards as well. 
and then let's update this. I think now it's time for us to go to the effects here. What we will do is that we'll turn on the ambient occlusion, which will help to make the shadows and the cornices a bit more realistic. I think let's add just a little bit more radius and then let's add the uh, ambient occlusion overlay to somewhere around here. So I think something like this could look all right. Uh, let's add just a little bit of a vignette and then uh, the white balance, I think it's completely fine as it is right here. Uh, anything else we would change here? I don't think so. Uh, is there any LUDs that we want to apply here? So <laughs> I'm just going to test this one out with a lower overlay. And I think this looks all right. I think, I think it gives it a, a bit more balance overall. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and render it and I can show you how we can transform it in post-production with AI. Okay, so now that this is done, we're going to go in AI post-processing. We're going to click on the image and first thing that we'll do is that we'll add an AI enhancement. We'll go enhancement way all the way up. This will be the first one. And then we're going to go over here at AI style transfer. There are a few things that we can do. So for example, we could also uh, give it a warmer look. So for example, some sort of sunset. Uh, this definitely works for exteriors. Let's give it a try on how it actually looks on interiors as well. Okay, so these are the results that AI came back with. This is before and this is after the post-processing. And this is while using the spring uh, style transfer here in the realistic tab. So this one. And I honestly liked this a lot. And this most likely is going to end up being my favorite. And then this one is the auto one. This is very good as well. As you can see, like if you zoom in, like it looks very realistic and it really gives you that autumn look. The one thing that would need to change here though is that obviously I rarely see autumn leaves in like the interior. <laughs> so that's one thing, but I love the warmth of it. And I think it looks very, very nice. This is the sunset one. This is way too warm. This is not, um, not for me. And then this is basically the exact same image that we had, just AI enhanced, which also looks very, very good. However, for me, I just think uh, either one of these, I think probably this one is going to have to take the throne. As you saw in this video, the real world texture assets were crucial in order to create the renders. So make sure you actually go and click the link below and sign up for the real world textures because this literally elevates renders on a whole level. And the great thing about this is 